Hey folks, it's Ardwolf. Welcome. We have another preview here today of the African Campaign. Designer Signature 2nd Edition. Brand new from Compass Games. Compass was kind enough to send me a copy of this. I had, of course, seen the previous version of the African Campaign, um, which is a reprint of the Jedco Classic, which in, in the opinion of many was Africa Corps done right. Um, so I haven't played it, so I cannot comment on that, but we're going to have a look today at the Designer Signature 2nd Edition now with Mounted Map. So design here was John Edwards, project director John Kranz, game artist Todd Davis, box cover by Knut Grunitz and Brian Miller. So I think Brian Miller is probably the cover dress person, um, and Knut Grunitz is the rest of it, I think. Please correct me if that's wrong. Uh, the African Campaign is yet another classic reborn by Compass. In quotes, I'm not sure what's up with that, but we're going to take a look. So, uh, we have the standard Compass Games 2-inch box here. Picture of Rommel on the side, which I think a lot of people are going to expect in an African Campaign game. So, let's open her up and see what we get. The box is heavy, so I mean you can really tell by the weight of the box that there's a mounted map in here. Sometimes I'm fooled because there's so much other stuff, but not, not in this case. Okay, so we have the Errata Slip. Combat engineer play before allied player enters minefield hex to immediately treat it as having no effect. Okay, so once again, oh this is very interesting. Okay, so we have a rule book, we have a board, we have a second board, we have a six-sided die that is now on the floor. We're here. We're here alive at Ardwolf's Lair with all the screw-ups and everything. So you get to see them. Uh, we have okay. We have some player aids. So here's the basic player aid. On one side you have terrain effects, combat results, axes, infantry replacements, and fuel. On the other side you have. Uh, optional player events and event chits. I didn't know that was a feature of this game, actually. Uh, then we have these, which are a bit of an oddball shape, but they're kind of square. And this is like a medium weight cardstock, I'd say. Maybe a little over medium weight. There's one for the allies and one for the axis. So you can have a player aid to help set this up. Thank you, neighbor, for cutting your grass right now. Much appreciated. We have one counter sheet here in uh, looks like 5 8 inch counters. Uh, they feel real nice. This is on a thick brown core stock. I think these will fit no trouble in my clipper. I could be wrong. I have been wrong before. Uh, but they feel real nice. The uh, registration on these is tight but accurate. I'm pleased to report. Check in the back. Looks good too. They have an interesting uh, sort of cover finish to them. It's a, just a Oh, just a little tiny bit more matte than one normally sees. Um, I like that, so, you know, there you go. Um, all right, put the die over here. Get that out of the way so it doesn't fall on the floor again. Uh, once again, like the new edition of Russian Campaign, the rule book here is 16 pages, um, and there's only about 12 pages of actual rules. The print is relatively small and compact, however. Uh, we got what, what feels to me like a satin finish, Full color, good use of color. It looks like um, not a huge rule book, uh, but the you know the prints. I don't think the print is problematically small, but it's it's not big either, right? So I don't think I would consider this an incredibly light looking game. Let's see what the uh, complexity medium. Well, that certainly sounds reasonable. Uh, unlike the Russian campaign, which which looks really really easy to play to me. All right, so we have uh, we have two mounted maps here, uh, but they're not full sized. They are. There is it. It is not going to be easy for me to give you an actual description in terms of elements of regular map size here. So here's what we'll do. I happen to have the tape measure here. So the two maps are the same size. This is about 25 and a half inches by. 17 inches, and there's two of them. So they will lay out like this. Are we? We're having a brain cramp. They'll lay out like this. So it's a it's a long map. Um, 
As you're probably aware if you're if you're watching this video, this is uh, covers what's called the Western Desert Campaign. Um, I've had people say to me, why is it the, what do you mean Western Desert Campaign? That's that's Tunisia and stuff. That's the Western part of the desert, but this is the, the part of the desert that's Western from the perspective of the British holdings in Egypt. So it is the 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 you can see maybe you can see Alexandria right here at the eastern edge of the eastern map. Um, so it's the part of the desert that's that's west of Alexandria, and that's why it's called the Western Desert Campaign. For those of you who may be wondering, so we have what looks like a turn record track along the top, which covers 50 turns. That's a lot. This is a very handsome game. Um, I'll also point out that uh, one of the reasons why there's a couple of reasons why I tend not to prefer mounted maps actually um, one of which is storage concerns right it's harder to store all the pieces in and, and the uh, mounted maps in the game box I'm not sure that's going to be a problem here we'll look at it in a second but one of the other things that make me eh, about mounted maps is their tendency to do what we call pooching which means they're not laying quite flat which means that I end up having to put plexi over them anyway, which mitigates the the virtue of having a mounted map. These uh, are pooching a little bit, but they lay flatter than your average mounted war game map, so I'm very happy about that. And I have a feeling that with a minimal amount of, uh, of breaking in, these things will actually be a nice flat map. So let's pull these out before I break something. And we'll take a look at the box again. Okay, so my goal for this kind of game is to... This is a one counter sheet game, right? This could be... We're not going to have a huge problem storing this thing. But even with the two maps, I've got about enough room in the box to fit a counter sheet, one counter tray. So even with the two mounted maps, which aren't... Two, again, two full-size mounted maps, but they're still mounted maps. I'm going to be able to get the entire game organized into this box, uh, which is always nice, right? I, I, I like uh, when everything in the game can fit in the game box at the end of the day when it's all organized and clipped and all that other stuff and is ready to play. Uh, so this is going to be one of those games. I'm delighted about that. So this has been a quick look at the new version of the African campaign. This is the second edition that Compass has done. Uh, it is now has a mounted map and is in a thicker box. Um, and it's very nice. I'm very pleased with it. So please give it a look. I will include a link to the product page at Compass Games uh, in the video description. So check that out if you are interested in a uh, pretty, uh, pretty easy, pretty clean playing uh, Western Desert game, which I think is something that unless you're like avoiding World War II as a topic, is something that should probably be in the library of every wargamer. So uh, give this a look. Uh, it is worth your consideration. So thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video or find it useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to help support Ard Wolf Slayer, I would much appreciate it if you would take a look at the links in the video description to the Patreon, the merch store, and the Ko-Fi. Until next time, thanks again, and happy wargaming. <laughs>